everybody, Vani here. Hope you guys are doing good. Uh, as you can see, I'm in a different spot. I'm just, I'm still in the living room where all my yarn and stuff is. It's just, I did some rearranging in. I'm obviously sitting in a chair, which is kind of nice because usually I'm standing up um, and trying to get the sun angle right from the windows and everything. But this spot here, like I do have natural light coming in, which is awesome right now, but I could record at night because I do have a ring light and I get to set that up and there's a plug right by me so I'm kind of excited to be sitting in a chair that's that's how boring my life has been lately I'm excited about sitting in a chair but anyway so I have the scraps the seagulls on like both seagulls and then I have some granny squares to show you from the latest um, Jada and Stitches cow the cow blanket that she's doing so and then at the end we're gonna like see what new amigurumi I'm making because this is the book that I'm working out of right now. Uh, hi if you're new, thanks for stopping by and hello if you have been here before. I love all of my YouTube yarny friends. So I'm just kind of crazy and I want to crochet every single pattern in this book because they're so cute. There's 30 patterns in here. I do a random spinner because how can you choose, you know? So it landed on a Scraps of Seagull. There it is. I had made Scraps like three years ago. Um, it's by Crochet by Kim and I purchased the pattern off of Etsy, which I believe is still there. I will link it down below. When I make the animals out of here, I make one that looks kind of like a traditional colored one and then kind of that's not traditional, but this time they're both kind of traditional colors. Now this is the same colors as the pattern. Um, I really like this pattern. It works up kind of quick and there are a lot of pictures because you do sew the legs, the wings. There are two tail feathers and the beak. You sew that on. I just embroidered some eyebrows on there with embroidery floss and then I just kind of latch hook styled the hair on top or the feathers I guess <laughs> because birds don't have hair. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, here is Scraps the Seagull. Uh, I don't know the actual like color of the feet and the beak because it was like it was a scrap ball of yarn that I had that was the perfect color. The rest of it is all Michael's loops and threads, white, gray, and black. Um, it's I just it's cute. I it's the cutest seagull I've ever seen because I really don't like seagulls. But this guy is cute. I love the derpiness. Uh, the wings are just sewn on at the top there and the tail tail feathers are sewed right here it's I think it's kind of cute um and I might set it in the dining room it's because our dining room like I do some videos in there sometimes when the pinball machine's behind me but it's just basically covered with decor from Cedar Point which is an amusement park in Ohio and seagulls you see many seagulls there and they sell, sell seagull stuffed animals at the park so I'm thinking it matches the theme of the room so I might put put them in there uh, so for the second one that I did I wanted to do a purple I had in my head I'm like okay I'll do like a, a lilac body with dark purple and then even a darker purple and maybe some like, I'm crazy you guys I'm like maybe some like neon purple feet and beak but then I'm like, it really wouldn't look like a seagull. I mean, you could tell it's a bird, but I kind of wanted you to be able to still tell it was a seagull. And Briella had the idea of just doing opposite colors, like doing, keeping the gray and the white and the black, but just mixing up those colors. So that's what I did. Here is the second seagull that I made. Same exact yarns, except the yellow. This is a brighter yellow. Um, it's loops and threads. And I did the same kind of facial features. The hair, I did fray the yarn just a little bit. <laughs> I don't know, it's, he's got personality. Like they both have, they both have their, their personality, their, their buddies. I did the tail feathers in white. Obviously the body is gray. And then the wings, I did that with the wings. I, I did though, um, I sewed this one together first. I made all the parts and then I sewed them. And um, when I put the feet on, they're a little farther apart. I like this one better. They're closer together. Um, and then the eyes, I put the eyes a little bit closer together on the white one, but I did exactly what the um, pattern said, I think for the gray one. 
and I kind of like the eyes a little bit closer together. So if I make this again, which I probably will because I really like this pattern, <laughs> I'm going to put the eyes just one stitch closer together. Um, but everything else is like same shapes and everything. I do like the non-frayed hair or feather head feathers. I don't, I don't know. I'm um, my bird feather anatomy. Um, so if I do make it, I won't be fraying it like I did for the gray, but I still think it looks cute. So we got with some, some seagull buddies. I cannot wait to see what the next animal is going to be. So anyway, yeah, those are my finished amigurumis. I'm also participating in the Jada and Stitches calendar blanket, which is Granny, Granny's Magical Cupboard, um, a bunch of granny squares, basically. You put them together at the end of the year into a blanket. And um, as I'm doing this, I am making the first square out of the same, um, like the same hook size she uses, which is a 5.5. But then I'm making additional squares a little bigger in a 3.75 because when I make a blanket, I just like it not to be as open. But anyway, <laughs> You guys, I really wasn't a fan of this one, to be honest. It's just not my style. So this, um, the latest installment is a Irish rose square. And it is a 3D, like that. You make the rose first and then you build the granny square around it. I, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty, but it's, <laughs> it's just not my style. I don't know how else to say it. I don't want to be rude or anything. Um, I enjoyed making it. She is an awesome teacher. Her tutorials are great. I will link that down below. Also, um, it's like a three rounds of, of petals. And it was cool learning how to do that. But for a blanket, no thanks. I just, I don't know. It's kind of, like, I don't know. Can you see? Like, it's, it's kind of really, like, bulky. And I just, I'm not going to be putting this one in a blanket um like the smaller squares that I make there are six rounds um technically this is a seven round because of the flower but it's the same size as the six round grannies those I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna put those together maybe a scarf who knows maybe a shawl or something but I am making two more blankets one like all kinds of colors because I love colors and the other one's gonna be greens and whites because I have a lot of those color of um of vintage yarns that my sister had picked up for me from garage sales and stuff so yeah I I will be using this but I didn't want to make more squares with the rows in the middle because I just it's just not my style so what I did is I made regular granny squares for the additional squares I'm making because I, I want a bigger blanket I'm doing 12 rounds and I'm using a 3.75 so it's not as open and the yarn I'm using is all loops and threads yarn so that it will fit together nicely. <laughs> and so I just, I'm doing, I just did, I'm like, well, I'll just do regular granny squares and put those in the blanket because those will still look good. And I took whatever balls that I had left. Like I was obviously working with these colors. And so I just made a granny square that looks like this. Then I went in my scrap balls and I got out some of the larger ones to use up and I ended up with this square here and then we've got kind of a sort of patriotic-y looking one with blue and reds or just red blue and red <laughs> and the other one that I'm making with the greens and like the off-white color let me grab those they're right next to me there's a chair next to me um if you curious and you see that right there that is from an old singer machine is like one of those cast iron um what would you call it? You guys are probably thinking of the word right now. It's got the pedal and the wheel on it, but it's it's missing the actual platform you would put the the um, sewing machine on. Sage actually has a sewing machine. We got it at a garage sale. It's crazy. But anyway, so that's what that is. It's like a singer thing that we're gonna make a top for. Back to the granny squares. <laughs> I just get off on tangents because I like talking to you guys. So I made this one here. Um, this one is like an off-white and then just green. And can you, I can really see it. You see where I lost it, yarn chicken. I had one more, one more row or round or whatever to go. And I really didn't feel like tearing it all out. 
because I had used like this green here, I made a solid, a solid green one. And I just wanted to use up that yarn. So I'm like, okay, um, I'll use it up on the, the, um, the edge of this one because I had a skein of off-white. So I used all the off-white and then I had some of that green left from the green square. So I was just like, maybe it'll be enough. It wasn't enough. And it was nighttime. <laughs> when I found this, I had a tiny little ball of some kind of green in my yarn stash. It's all acrylic, but it, in the daylight, it doesn't match. But that's okay because isn't there something about like crocheting an imperfection into your work on purpose? Um, I don't know if anyone finds this mistake. Well, it's not a mistake. If anyone finds this interesting bit of green after the blanket is already completed, at the end of the year, then good for them. <laughs> so anyway, I've got this one and this one, and then I've got two other uh, partial skeins of, of yarn. I don't know the exact names or anything of these. They didn't have any ball bands. Uh, it is a little more off-white though than it's showing. And I made that one. So I'll have just some regular granny squares for those blankets of all the, because there are some, I don't know, I kind of think they're fancier squares. <laughs> they're different. Um, and it'll help the blanket, I think, just to come together. And that's my story because I didn't want to do, I didn't want to do a bunch of the rose ones. Plus, if I had done the rose, it would just be in the middle and the rest of the square would be a regular granny square. Anyways, and it's not like that big, so it would, I don't know. I don't know. It reminds me of a hat, like scraps where's little scraps it just it kind of reminds me of a hat um so who knows if I make some dolls and I need a hat oh well, even that would work I'm just being silly but anyway I've got one more thing to show you guys um because nobody else in my life cares <laughs> so I want to share with you this tiny little um yarn haul that I got I've been seeing people going to Michael's and the clearance and uh, we had to go to Michael's because Biela's making a little pet shop schoolhouse. It's all crafty with foam and like the like the sheets of foam. And so we needed to get one of those. Um, and of course, I have to go look at the yarn. <laughs> Nothing was on sale except for some clearance yarn for $5. And they didn't have very much at all. They had um, just a couple of skeins of this. <laughs> so I got it because it was $5. It's called Pink Purple Multi, and it's it's a little bit thicker. What do they call this? A seven? Yeah, this is a size seven jumbo yarn, and I don't know if you're interested. There's 87 yards, 200 grams. So I got two of those. They are five dollars each, and I did have a ten dollar voucher, so I mean, practically free. But I also got. <laughs> two other colors well one other color so I got two I got the purple and the pink multi and then is this one called green and yellow multi let's see yellow green multi <laughs> two of those same size size seven um I thought these would make really cute snakes uh, even the pink and the purple so you know four skeins of yarn for twenty dollars minus my ten dollar voucher four skeins for ten dollars of the number seven really soft stuff not too bad <laughs> I didn't feel guilty at all and I even left some because they had four um four of the pinks and purples four of the greens and yellows and I took two so there were still two left so I'm like okay I'm not like really gonna take all the yarn well then a few days later we <laughs> we had to go to Michael's again um and I just checked to see what they had and they had two more of these now one of them is fine it looks just like this but the other one was all like it's clean and it was in the bin but this is what it looks like it's it needs to be wound up it's yeah it's got fuzzies I'm getting covered in fuzzies but anyway so this is what it looked like it's all there I can tell that it's not missing anything and like I said it's clean so I rescued it and I told the girls I'm like you know I need to rescue this yarn that's what I told myself so I've got four skeins of this and two skeins 
color the pink and the purple, which I know for sure. Snakes. I don't know what else I'm going to make with it. I don't know where I'm going to put it. Do you know where I put it? I piled it on my nice, clean crochet cart. <laughs> so, yeah. It can't stay there, though, because it's, it just takes up too much room. I'm sure I will find something or somewhere to put it. Um, and then, I don't know, maybe next time I see you guys, I'll show you a amigurumi snake or something else made out of this. It's so soft, so you guys, it's so soft. It's been a while since I've made anything out of the chenille yarns. Um, I've been using acrylic yarns a lot, but I think a seagull would look really cute in um, blanket yarn or chenille yarn. So I don't, I just, I don't have enough white or else I totally would have made, <laughs> I would have made another scrap of the seagull in chenille yarn, but you guys, all these loaf cats I'm seeing, I might need to be making some more loaf cats. I made some maybe a couple years ago. I don't know. I used a pattern by False Bubbles. And um, yeah, so I don't know. A green and yellow cat. Maybe the pink and purple. That might be a cute kitty cat. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So that's what I have to show you guys today. Thank you so much for stopping by. And visiting with me. I'm thinking about doing crochet in chat um because I want to talk about my yarn and I like watching crochet in chats and I think it would be fun so maybe I'll do one of those but right now we're gonna go over to my laptop and see what the next animal is going to be out of the Zumigurumi favorites book. All right I'll see you guys very soon. Bye everybody! Okay, it's that time to pick the next animal that I'll be crocheting out of the Zumigurumi favorites. Here we go. Oh boy, it's the anglerfish. That one looked a little bit challenging. <laughs> All right, the anglerfish. I can do this. So, we will find the anglerfish. There it is. Oh my goodness, what's his name? Let's see. Angie, what's her name? Angie the anglerfish. Wow. I'm hoping it's not as complicated as it looks, but this one will be really fun to play around with some colors. All right. Another jelly bean. Angie, the anglerfish. <laughs> 